So my advice to anybody who's considering selling is don't be greedy and just mm. try to get up as much cash up front as possible. And, you know, try to, you know, if you try to squeeze every dollar out of your deal, you might end up falling through and losing a deal. Or if you get greedy, mm. you could lose a deal. Uh, I made a big mistake at first and, and lost, you know, I could, I probably could have made an extra $8 million on my exit if I'd- Oh, wow. Picked, picked, picked $8 million right mistake. <laughs>
for close to $20 million. Mm. And then there was another deal that was like, hey, if everything went right and we got a public exit, it would have been like, you know, $35, $40 million. I was like, ah, oh, let's take a risk. Let's go for it. <laughs> and then uh, my sales started declining a bit. That aggregator didn't end up going public and that deal mm. fell through. <clears throat> and then I made another mistake of setting up a second brand before I exited the first brand. And so that kind of dispersed my attention. I set up a second brand and then I got under contract a second time. And because I had two brands on the go and the, the first, second brand was just in a launch phase mm. and I bought so much inventory for it that I just, my attention was too dispersed. My attention, my team's yeah. attention was too dispersed. And then that December we missed our, like our previous December's numbers. And then that buyer pulled out of that deal. So I lost the second deal because mm. I was too dispersed and not focusing on. So that's the other lesson I think people can learn is to a take as much money up front as guaranteed as possible, even if you take less. And then secondly, is stay 100% focused on your main business until it's sold and completely done before, you know, trying to get into other ventures, even if that means like buying real estate or any kind of other thing that's going to take your attention mm -hmm. off. Um, I wish I had not started a second brand. That's for sure. I ended up liquidating about $600,000 worth of inventory for that brand to also just because oh, well, okay. we didn't execute on it properly. So it, was, it, was a, it cost me millions of dollars in my initial business because I got less of multiple when I sold. And mm. also, you know, it was just a shit show. So but they, the, there's Go always ahead. that tiny thing that looks like, well, I mean, this could really work out if I just do that thing. And yeah, it's going to take off and so on. So it yeah, takes, I wanted uh, to, it's a temptation I wanted to, to, you know, to resist it. I wanted to have the next thing set up so that I could keep my team. That was the other thing. I had such a good team. I had over 20 mm. employees and a great team. And I didn't want to have to just let everyone go and not have anything going. So I thought, wow, yeah. I should get set up the second brand. So then when we exit the first one, we just shift over to the second brand. And that turned out to be a big mistake. That cost me probably, if the first mistake made, cost me $8 million, that one probably cost me easily three million dollars yeah maybe so, four so what what actually made you decide to sell like at this given time like what what, what was your thing like you you mentioned that you experienced really this uh, big bump in covid time like especially like pretty much all sellers experienced the growth but you experienced like uh, three four x so yeah. um by the, by the way what was the reason that you think that, I mean, that you were also able to keep it there? Like, was it that you Yeah, just well, it was there? a struggle. Like 2021, we were actually, I think our, our revenue was pretty flat because 2020, mm. um, it was, it only kicked in in March when the COVID thing came in. Mm. And, and then, so it was like nine months of 2020 just went crazy. And then 2021 was crazy until about March or April and then it started falling off. But then we started launching new products and had a new hero product. And we were able to, the only reason we were able to keep our revenues high, like over 12 million was mm. because we launched a new product and it was a new hero product. I was, are you, do you still have your brand, Tony? Yeah. Do you talk about it? Uh, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to copy cats. <laughs> it's private. Okay, good. Yeah. Anyway, you, you and I were in similar spaces, basically, like mm. we had some overlap and that's how we met in the first place. I was like, Hey, yeah, I wonder yeah. if I can refer my, my people to you and you to me and kind of thing. But I kind of forgot what your question was. Sorry. But why did I think it was a good time yeah. to sell? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that was the original question. Like, um, like what was your reason that, okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to sell now. Yeah, uh, because I knew that the writing was on the wall and like when you triple your business in a year mm. and people are at the time, the multiples jumped up also like it went from like two to three X to, you know, four or five X yeah. multiples on businesses. So I just knew that it was perfect timing. And then also my friend who went from 13 million EBITDA to quarter billion dollar 
<laughs> I was like, yeah. shit, this is the time to try and get the heck out of here. Hmm. So are you allowed to mention about your multiples? What was the non-disclosure cover for you? Um, well, let's see. You know, By the, the way, whole... I just want to say that for anyone who doesn't know, always in these deals, I mean, you need to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which means that you're not allowed to yeah. share, share all the information publicly. And same thing applies like, um, even when you're just negotiating or talking with buyers, like I'm talking with a, a few buyers next week. And I mean, I already had to sign this in the yeah. end, which means that I'm not allowed to tell anything. I mean, I won't say the exact multiples, but when it, in 2021, when I got that first offer, it, that was 43% higher than what I ended up getting at the end of it. Oh, okay. So yeah. that's how much it dropped over time. Plus my EBITDA dropped a bit as well because our revenues were higher, but you know how shipping costs went crazy high mm. around and, and then PPC costs were going up and then FBA fees were increasing. And plus like I didn't have the most efficient team. I had a good team and I had a big team, but I mean, mm. I probably could have run with a lot more or a lot less overhead also. Yeah. By the way, have you looked into what the buyer has done for your brand? Yeah, I mean, they have, because we had bestseller badges across most of our products, especially at Christmas and and Easter and summertime, because our products mm. were like outdoor toys for kids. So summertime was big. We were able to position them really well as Easter gifts and Easter basket stuffers and at Easter time. And at Christmas time, somehow we were able to convince people to buy them even though they were summer toys we could position them well at christmas time as gifts so mm. those were kind of like the peak times so not a lot of buy uh, sellers are used to seasonal businesses like that so trying to keep it up at that same level in those three peak times isn't the easiest thing to do i I'm, i laid out exactly how to do it and what to do but i mean they didn't execute on it as well as we did and unless you really crushed it at Easter, Christmas, and summertime, you know, it was easy to underperform and they did underperform and they lost some bestseller badges. And um, yeah, I mean, they ended up getting into financial trouble within a year of the close. Oh, and that's, okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably why I've got like, I got stung a bit financially, not a bit, like almost, almost a seven figure sting that I was mm. expecting payment a year after close and I didn't get it. So that's, um, I don't know. It's, it's important to take the money when, when you can get it. And then also just be wise with the but, money and don't waste it. But was that like or not the last payment or was it? The last like, payment was actually for in inventory. I had a lot of inventory mm. because the supply chain got so disrupted in 2021, mm. I ended up getting more like six to 12 months of inventory in some products. And we even had over a year of inventory in some products in a US warehouse. So, mm. cause most of our products came from China and the shipping containers and everything was kind of messed up in 2021. So instead of, and plus we had such seasonal spikes, we would, our sales would just go crazy at Easter and crazy at Christmas time. So it wasn't just a, a flat, normal thing. So we ended up getting a lot of inventory. And then at close, they said, Oh, we'll pay you for your inventory every quarter as we sell the inventory. And then mm. after two quarters, they got into financial trouble. And they were like, Oh, by the way, we can't really pay you for this inventory. So wow. that became a problem. Yeah. yeah, lesson is that I mean, take as much money straight away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do so, you have some so, of the guys on the call that have exited or they probably wouldn't be that interested in listening probably if they already have exited? Uh, so uh, let's see, uh, who do we have here? Well, I kind of see if this is a Facebook stream, so I cannot see who's oh, talking. Okay. So, it's a Facebook um, stream, you said? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yes. I didn't know you could go from Zoom to Facebook. Yeah, but it, it can only do for like one, one group at a time. 
I got you. But yeah, so one thing was actually like, uh, so, so you are still selling on Amazon, right? Yeah, and this is my new new brand here. It's called Ultimate Health. I wish the mm -hmm. text looked because the I guess the display is mirrored. But if you can read backwards, the brand's called Ultimate Health, and we uh, actually have the number one best-selling probiotic yogurt maker. Okay. I don't know. You guys are you guys are in Europe, so you probably you could probably get a, a product similar to this in Europe. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's it's really good for your gut health, and you can you know. You can take any commercial probiotic product and take it from billions to trillions of live cultures and never have to buy probiotics again. So it's a, mm. it's a really cool product. And then we have some supplements also. And I just released this book called Ultimate Health. And uh, everybody yeah, on need the to call check should, it out. Should check it out from the, uh, I think it's only 99 cents right now in the Kindle store if you like to read Kindles. Okay. But I mean, it'll well, change. No, your not really. Awesome. I'm I'm more of a like audiobook guy. <laughs> I know what you mean. I I want to record it into my own voice, so I haven't actually recorded it yet. Yeah. But um, I thought it'd be a little lame if I hired a narr narrator to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. But by the way, like uh, there was this one guy. Um, who was it? Yeah, it was Tim Edwards. Like he made an this audiobook version where it was more like uh, he was talking with other guy and like it was more like a conversation. So that was like, that was the most inter interesting audiobook I ever like listened to. Like ah, it was the same okay, book, good. but he was reading and discussing it with his, uh, with his friend. So that, oh, that's, that's cool. The, that's the so you get more information version. than if you just read the book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd like to go on a little tangent. Yeah. Here and then. So you went, straight back into selling on Amazon there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't stop. I had the second brand that yeah. was a failure, honestly. I've had one brand succeed on Amazon, one brand fail. And right now my yogurt maker is doing really well, the probiotic maker, but my supplements are just terrible. In fact, right now I found out today that I'm probably gonna have to destroy $75,000 worth of inventory in that product. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it sucks, but um, so, you know, that's what entrepreneurship's about, though, in my experience. I mean, maybe everybody has wins and no losses, but mm. I've had I've had two big wins in my life where I made a lot of money and then I've had mm. several losses. So I think you just got to stay positive and keep moving forward. Yeah. But, you know, the, the book, uh, have you read The, the Lo Road Less Stupid? No, have you read it? That's, that's a really good book. And, you know, it talks about that it's not really about the uh, success. Like um, if you want to maximize your sex success, it's not about doing the right decisions. It's just about like mainly avoiding the dumb decisions. So you don't pay the dumb tax. So meaning yeah, yeah, same yeah. Thing, investing, you're thinking that ah, I'm just going to do this one deal and that it's going to change my life. And then boom, <laughs> it goes, yeah. it goes down. I've made and you plenty of dumb, so much dumb decisions. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, fortunately, I'm, I live a comfortable lifestyle. You you see where I live, you know, I drive a Ferrari. Like, life's not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, there's actually some uh, questions like um, people were asking, like, how many products did you have under the brand? Okay, we had about, let's see. Well, I can show you the products. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to share share a screen with like it's not sure. it's not top confidential uh here i'll click share screen i'll show you the brand yeah i'm i made you a co-host yes now we can see yeah okay but there's all this shit on here let's see i'm gonna drag this stuff over here i drag me over here good so now you just see a clean amazon page right okay so this mm -hmm. the brand is called active life without an e and an active and these are these are our hero products right here this these LED bike wheel lights. Mm -hmm. And they used to have bestseller badges. Both these listings had bestseller badges. Um, and then this product here was just fucking crushing it. We sold, we got into the top 10 of uh, toys and games with this guy. Wow. I, yeah. And then at Christmas time, we could get these bike lights into the top 10 in sports and outdoors. Mm. So we like our, our our secret power was um was christmas easter and summertime this product here didn't do quite as well it's a underwater pool ball you fill it with water 
Oh yeah, these frisbees. These are my very first product. This is why I reached out to you because that you had a product that was kind of similar to this one. And yeah, I had one. I gave, gave it to my children. <laughs> yeah, this is this was our first hero product. This always had a bestseller badge, but as you can see, yeah. I don't know if you click into these listings and you look at the BSR. I'm sure. Um, oh, actually, I'm not in the right browser to get like Helium 10 history and shit. But you can, you'll just see that the aggregator has. They haven't run it totally in the ground, but they're definitely not performing as well as we once. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So do you know like how many brands are they operating? Gosh, I'm not sure exactly how many they're operating. Um, but I, I'm not going to fault them because I screwed up just with two brands. <laughs> like yeah, just me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me getting a second brand definitely uh, dispersed my attention and mm. caused my first brand to not perform well. So um, I'm just going to stop. Yeah, sharing. it's all about focus. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't remember who's I think it was Alex Harmozy. I don't know. How do I stop sharing here? Just a second. Pause. Uh, sure. Here's stop share. There we go. Good. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of people say um, time is your most valuable resource. I think that's mm. the same. But yeah. I think as Alex Harmozy said, attention is your most valuable mm. resource. And I think he's right. Is mm -hmm. if you guys start dispersing into doing real estate deals and doing, you know, crypto and doing all kinds of shit, then your attention's all on these other things instead of your core business. Like, mm -hmm. you can, if you can make a two to three, like the returns you can make in your own business outweigh almost any other opportunity, unless you maybe just catch it lucky on a crypto cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, like, uh, also, um, you know, like usually most uh, most billionaires actually usually recommend that. Like the best investment is the thing that uh, you have this expertise on, meaning that because, you know, the returns are just going to be so much higher than something that you start on totally new thing where you have zero expertise or zero knowledge or you, you don't right. really don't know how to like read the, read the business field or read the market in, in a similar way that you know, like your own own uh, right. business area like inside and out totally yeah so i so think the, yeah go ahead uh yeah so, sorry go, go ahead i have a different question i right, hit it let's do it yeah so so uh, what do you think like um like how were you able to get to eight figures like so so many people are stuck with seven figures right okay so i mean Quite frankly, it was the COVID bump that broke me up mm. into like I was I started in 2015. I don't know. You started around that time, didn't you? 2015, yeah. 2014, maybe 14. Yeah, right. So it was so easy back then. I think guys like, well, you were a lot more aggressive than I was. I was I was kind of hesitant. I didn't I don't think I hired my first US based employee until 2019. I had yeah. a VA or two here in the Philippines, but um, so, it, but in 2020, 2019, I decided, okay, I'm going to man up a little bit. And then 2020 hit. And then that's when I hired a general manager and I just started putting in a team that could actually execute on things. And then we started selling in all over, you know, Amazon Canada, Amazon UK, EU. We even went into, Japan and Australia, which was a complete mistake. But I mm -hmm. mean, we tried Walmart, you know, like, yeah, we're yeah. just trying to, trying to punch things up. But um, I'd say getting a really good team and then paying them bonuses based on growth. I think mm -hmm. that's important. That's actually uh, one, one thing that you have set up that like you, you made this like bonus system based on this performance, right? Yeah. I think that's really important to tie in your teams and their your teams when like when you're winning your team's winning and when your team's winning you're winning. I think just aligning those things is really important. That was a key to success for me in my first business. Mm -hmm. I had one year. I used to do black hat SEO back in the day. It started in the 90s and I remember one year we had we only had a team of 6 guys 
and we profited over three million dollars in in one year. So my mm. profit net net profit per employee this was Canadian dollars, so they're less they were less than U.S. dollars, but in Canadian dollars, I netted over half a million dollars per employee, which yeah. <laughs> is just fucking crazy. And part of the reason mm. I was able to do that was because I had set up bonus programs and games to make it so that my employees were so focused on on growing and and doing better. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing. And uh, by the way, do you still have the same team, like working on your uh, new business? That's an interesting question. Um, I tried to keep the same team, and because the second brand that I was building failed, I ended up scaling back a lot, and I only have three people from my original team. I kept my HR person in the Philippines so I could build another team. I kept my logistics guy in the Philippines because he's really good and could build around him. And I kept one guy, like my right, it wasn't even my general manager. I kept like my administrative guy in the US who does the, the books and all the compliance shit and legal stuff. It's all the stuff I don't want to do basically. Mm. I, kept, I kept him and then now we've rebuilt a, a, a smaller team around that core group and um, yeah I wish I, the goal was to try and keep the whole team together in fact we even considered becoming like an accelerator where we'd help brands that are already mm. on the go you know boost their business and exit and I considered that but um, didn't end up acting on that I decided okay. I wanted to build a health brand and that's where we we went yeah. So, so did you shut down the other brand that you had? Yeah, the second brand, we ended up liquidating most of the inventory on the second brand. So yeah, in one year, I took a hit of over a million dollars in inventory be, mm. be, between selling off my own inventory that I fucked up on and then mm. also the aggregator that they fucked up. So between the two of them, that was like close to $1.5 million. But, but you are at the point where you're like, ah, one million there, uh, nah, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's still so mess for sure. But, you know, I didn't dwell on the, the, the failure for too long and just focused on creating more value in my current business. And I, hmm. I have one hero product now. I, the supplements are really sucking right now, but the book's a bestseller and hmm. I'm sure we'll figure it out. So are you doing like anything outside of Amazon or are you just like focusing mainly on Amazon with the brands? Well, I mean, what I'm finding with supplements is that the PPC is so high that I'm looking at ways to expand without necessarily just using Amazon PPC. My, my previous brand, I was able to pretty much succeed just through Amazon PPC and mm. not having like that active life brand. I was able to just drive performance mainly through Amazon ads. So, but with the, the PPC is so high in supplements that mm. um, I'm looking at TikTok. I'm looking at trying to get my book. I'm talking to somebody in a, in a couple hours that specializes in book marketing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how to turn, you know, book sales, A, get your book sales up and then also turn those into customers with high, yeah. high lifetime value. So I'm even looking at doing courses. Like I know you've done well with that, but this book has got so much information. You can read it in an afternoon, mm. but if you want to execute on everything, you know, I'm sure people would have questions like, how do I do this and how do you do that? And so we'll probably build a course around that. So, you know, to give people yeah. more information. Yeah. So are your like supplements they like built around this? Is it like the same brand? Yeah, I mean the brand's called yeah. Ultimate. In fact, if you go to Amazon.com and cite like if our URL on Amazon is Amazon.com slash ultimate, which is kind of cool, right? Mm. Ah, so okay. if you go to if you go to <laughs> nice. Amazon.com forward slash ultimate, you'll see my brand and yeah. you'll see my probiotic yogurt maker. And then we have some amino acids and some other products that aren't doing well right now. And mm. so I think we're going to be doing face, like I plan to be Facebook marketing, Instagram marketing. I've got a yeah. friend right now who's getting so much traction on Instagram. It's ridiculous. Like every video gets hundreds of thousands of views and he's a good friend of mine. 
Mm. So I'm just thinking, wow, if I can crack that code and do that in the health space, you know, that'll be be huge. Yeah. His 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 brand is called Twenty Minute Trader. If you guys want to see a really good Instagram channel and TikTok channel, check out Twenty Two Zero Twenty Minute Trader. Twenty Minute Trader. Trader. Okay. Twenty Minute Trader. He is just crushing it, and he does these little little commercials almost, and they're so cool and good. And if you can do something like that for your brand, I, I'm sure you'll do well. Yeah. Cool. That's actually an interesting question that uh, like, what's the biggest factors for like your success? I mean, and you cannot mention mi mi mindset or determination. <laughs> and don't say mindset. Okay. Um, yeah. No mindset stuff. Right. Um, I think let's see here. Well, The way I've made the most money in my life is identifying where money is flowing. Like for instance, SEO back in the day, it still still mm -hmm. exists today. Obviously SEO is bigger today yeah, than yeah. ever. But when I was doing it in the late nineties, uh, I was the, I realized if I want to make a lot of money, I need to identify where there's a lot of money flowing and mm -hmm. a lot of attention and then somehow just inter like get myself in the middle of that. So for me, get, you know, positioning myself between people looking for stuff and people selling stuff. I made my first million as an affiliate. I didn't even sell any products. I was just getting paid on clicks, paid on, uh, you know, acquisitions back in the day. Google was sending me huge checks, Expedia. It was, mm. it was a glorious time, but it wasn't very <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But, and then you look at Amazon and Amazon, there's so much money flowing on Amazon right now. So that's why it's such a good place to interject yourself and, you know, carve out a position. But, um, you know, I think it's really important just to identify opportunities and then mm. figure out how you can do something better than what's currently happening in that area and then just go do it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's more basic. I can make it on that. But I don't succeed. I'm not like a real estate investor. I'm not a good crypto guy, but I'm good at spotting business opportunities. And then also just going balls deep when I see mm. an opportunity and like doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down on things and really taking a lot of risk to make big, big returns. Yeah. There was actually a really interesting way how like Warren Buffett, Buffett said that um, I mean, he had like classmates uh, when he was like graduating. I mean, both of them had the exact same background, exact same education and, you know, ex exact same step where they basically started. But the, and uh, even the like intelligence and all that stuff. But it was just so that uh, Warren actually chose a different type of vehicle that m allowed him to be like much, much more successful than the other guy. So it was all mm -hmm. about his his point was that it's about the vehicle you choose and you know the path that you actually take then so it's not yeah. even if all the other stuff is the same right yeah and I'm, I'm like nobody compared to elon musk and all these guys who are just mm. grant cardone he's all about getting attention 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 the, the more attention you can get the better and my friend who's doing this 20 minute trader thing that's his successful action is get as much attention as possible yeah. So I, I think that is the key is get as much attention as possible and then figure out how to way to how to way to monetize that. Mm. And so ideally I do asking, something you love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it feels like more like play and more like game. So you get this yeah. enjoyment, but you don't end up hating your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So are you still working with that. Victor? Yeah. We are That's still awesome. The TV team. <laughs> awesome. I like Victor. And so you know, uh, he has a, a positive attitude, you know, and like surrounding yourself with great people. I think that's A players, like don't tolerate having B players on your team. Hmm. If you got yeah, a B yeah, player, that, yeah. That, that, that's so true. Like uh, you should hire a fire fast, but like fire faster because, you know, uh, if you like, uh, it just, it, Usually, like if you just give second chance, third chance, fourth chance, then 
what are the likelihood that yeah suddenly it's going to turn out that it, it's going to be amazing right? right usually i mean you can see that ah this is not going to work out so you should just make the decision to you know cut, cut that path and go different ways right exactly yeah for sure <clears throat> yeah so, so the question like uh, what, what kind of pitfalls you should avoid like especially in the beginning so what's uh, like your, avoid? your view on that yeah okay one mistake well i didn't make this early on because i didn't have the money like i actually had to borrow 10 grand from my parents when i first started out amazon because mm -hmm. i was selling so much of these fris so many of these frisbees i just couldn't keep up with the demand especially at christmas time yeah and so i borrowed some money uh but now like, like more recently i make the mistake of buying too much inventory i'm like i can do it mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i buy six I buy six hundred thousand dollars worth of you know novelty gift mugs if you want to see my failure of a brand it's called great am gr the number eight am like great mm -hmm. great thing great am great anyway, am okay great am they're, they're novelty gift mugs they're color changing heat sensitive mugs anyway that was just a disaster but mm -hmm. so that was an example of ordering way too much inventory but in terms of pitfalls early on i think um you know, keeping up with demand can be a problem because sometimes you can get a, a product that takes off on Amazon and the demand's there. And if you stock mm. out screwed and you lose your momentum and even if you bring it back on in stock, you might not get back to the same level of success that you had. So yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. If you have a light product that you can airship, I remember in the first year or two, I airshipped a lot of stuff and mm. didn't do sea shipping until later on when I could afford the big orders and had more of a logistics team in place to handle all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Related to this, uh, there was a question uh, from Nika that, uh, what, what was your first order, like when you started? How uh, my first product spend? was actually a, a, a sports towel. It was um, sports a sports towel. Yeah. Okay. So we did the amazing selling machine in 2015 and it was this microfiber sports towel and we call it the active towel and mm. we discontinued that it's so i was able to position that as a stocking stuffer at christmas and we just blew through the inventory but um other than that it was just it was a shitty product and then these frisbees came in but when we first started doing the frisbees we we're sourcing the, the frisbees in the united states and we're actually packaging them in my garage like we would buy buy the, these white boxes from uline.com and yeah. we buy stickers from uprinting.com and we'd actually manually put them in, put tape on them. Like we were actually packaging these products and like boxing them up and using UPS to send them into Amazon. It was totally bootstrapped. Oof. But um, so that's what my first orders were looking like. It was like, <laughs> it was, so you really pretty... failed every single order that. <laughs> yeah. And then, then I hired a company to make color boxes and package mm. them and you know and you know over time i was just put more and more teams in and processes and stuff like that but it was definitely humble beginnings for sure mm. do you still use the blueprint uh the blueprint is that what you said the perfect product blueprint i think we just still do that actually when we're analyzing a product we do use your perfect product blueprint to uh, evaluate it as, as a step anyway. Yeah. 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 I tend to be a little bit more intuitive on things though. Cause like, for instance, the yogurt maker, when we first started selling it, the top competitor was not doing the volume that we're doing. So mm -hmm. even though we're newer in the market, we're just dominating the space right now. And so none of your, none of your listeners should come into the probiotic makers. Cause I'm going to crush you, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No um it's just if you see an opportunity and something's selling like for instance if you can take a product like here's a microphone right i got this mm. blue yeti mic and if i can figure out how to position this as a as a gift for a teenager for instance like a lot of guys are doing gaming and twitch and all that kind of shit. Mm. i don't know maybe, maybe you can position a product a different way and position it as a gift that was really successful for me so, mm. or find a way to sell that to a broader audience or broader keywords. 
that's what I really focused on early on was I used my SEO experience to really leverage a product. So the Frisbees, initially I just did the Frisbees and I was like, okay, how do I sell this as a Christmas gift? How do I sell mm. this as Easter basket gift? How do I sell it as a, you know, a gift for four year old boys? All this kind of shit. And you start punching out more and more keywords, more and more keywords. And all of a sudden you're making more and more sales than your competitors. Mm. So you're actually expanding the market. That's something I would say is just think like an SEO and think about who who could buy this product and what kind mm. of keywords could they type in and what, who to make a good gift for and start, you know, we used to put different titles on all our children titles. Like for instance, the, the Frisbees, we had maybe eight colors of the Frisbees and mm. each title, each title for the Frisbees had a different keyword set. Like the red and blue one, we would focus on boys mm. toys. The pink and pink and purple one, we'd focus on girls, gifts, stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, just try to get your, your keyword universe so large that mm. you're bringing in so much traffic that you're, you're going to become number one, no matter what, even if you start out with fewer reviews and you're, you're the underdog to begin with, because most yeah. of your competitors are not thinking that way. They're not thinking as an SEO and they're not thinking, well, I'm selling this coffee maker. Who, who else could I sell it to? Could I make it a mother's day gift? Could I make it all these other things? Would it make a good anniversary gift? You know, like who knows? Mm. So I think it's worth it trying all those things. Yeah, it's like each variation has its purpose that, okay, you're going there to get to, you know, get that audience here and you're, you're going that way to get the audience here and so on. Yeah, so. a really good friend of mine, his name is Aaron Cardovez. He's got a brand called Zulai. He's also got his own aggregator now. But I did his podcast a couple of years ago and that was the main secret I gave to people was look at your variation group. Like if you have a product, say they're Frisbees, right? And you have eight mm. different colors of the Frisbees. Look at each product as a player. And that player's job is to bring more attention to the listing. So the, the parent, the parent listing does not have any value really at all. It's the, the children, all the parent does is group the children together. Yeah. yeah. That's just and the if container. You're in the, yeah. If you're in the sports and outdoors here, I'll drop another little secret here. If you're in the sports and outdoors category, you can actually get your your parent title to be the one that displays in the search results and at the top of the page for all the children as well. So your child titles almost become invisible in the sports and outdoors category if you execute on it properly. So what we would do is we'd make our parent title for like the Frisbees super benefit oriented. And then the child titles would be just spanned with keywords and different keywords across different variations so that, you know, the, the whole keyword universe was much wider than just selling Frisbees. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, it varies in, in uh, different categories uh, and we were selling something that, you know, didn't allow this uh, variation. So we kind of forced it on the listing and had, had like an uh, each variation has its purpose like okay this is the, the like cheapest price and and this is a different kind of offer so you, know, you really like uh ha had a wide mm -hmm. uh, wide range right yeah and that's another thing that sets anybody who's listening right now if you're trying to expand your brand it might be just as simple as creating a two-pack of something or mm. creating more color variations for your product if you look at my friend aaron zulai and you look at his milk frother, he sells a milk frother that you froth, like if you want to have cappuccinos and lattes yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, you can just whip whip the milk with this milk frother it's called. Anyway, he just dominates the space. But if you look at his listings, he's probably got 80 color variations and he'll use the black, the black model as a loss leader just to get people in. And then he'll have hmm. more expensive color versions that I'll, I'll, you know, he probably sells the most of the black one just because it's black and it's cheap. But then he's got all these other ones in there that you can choose if you want a pink one, if you want a red one, if you want a silver one. And those ones are more expensive and his margins way better. So mm. he almost as he uses that, that, that main product, that main variation as his billboard or his loss leader just to get people in the listing. And he's okay breaking even on that or even losing a little bit of money on that one variation because he knows that 
if he's the number one seller and has that best seller badge that everyone's going to go into his listing and they're going to buy something. And as long mm. as he's selling some of the other ones, he's going to make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, then you could e even do like different kinds of um, brands and different kinds of products, which is basically the same thing, but you are just getting more space from their yeah. search results meaning yeah he, i don't think you know i don't think he does other brands but he does he does he's an aggregator so he's buying up brands he's actually uh what the heck's their name of the company they're actually a competent aggregator like there's not a lot of aggregators out there that are competent and actually can run mm -hmm. a brand but every brand he buys he increases the performance of and I'm just trying to oh think. that that's an exception <laughs> what's that that, that's quite an exception if if uh, if they are actually increasing the sales after, yeah, uh, you know, the, after the acquisition. Yeah, I, I'm just I want to give them a plug. They're, they're good guys. Just a second, David. And you guys, if you have any questions, oh, oh Nexus, they're you called Nexus Capital. There's two Nexus X's. Capital. Okay. N E X X U S Capital. Nexus Capital. Uh, and their, their their domain name is Nexus Cap, N E X X U S C A P dot com. So, they're guys that you could work with. They're really good at raising money too. They've got an interesting mm. model. When they want to buy a brand, they'll raise the money from investors to buy the brand, and they'll keep fifty percent of the profits for themselves and give fifty percent to the investors. And then I okay. think they're. Their OPEX is maybe 7% operation expense and then 50, 50. Mm. So it's a really smart business model. And they're, because they're really good at operating brands, people are more mm. than willing to give them capital, especially because they can get much higher returns with them than, you know, just parking the money and T bills and stuff like that, or the stock market. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So how do you see it? Like the Amazon selling space, like, uh, in 24 like what has changed what's the new things in like in your perspective well it seems like off amazon traffic is almost a must maybe not 100 percent a must but if you can definitely tap into TikTok or google mm -hmm. or blogs or whatever your secret power is or some secret power that you can hire that is off amazon traffic I think that's huge. Um, I don't know. I, I think day parting on ads is a good idea. Let, letting your competitors waste their budget from like midnight to 4 a.m. or even 8 a.m. <laughs> like let yeah. them let them waste their clicks early on, and then you come in, turn on your ads at you know 10 a.m. or something like that, and crank it. I mean, I think top of search ads have a lot of value if you can get your conversion. I mean, there's tools mm -hmm. in there too, in the brand area where you can see what your, like the median conversion rate is and your, for the keyword and making sure that you're always above that, I think is pretty important. Otherwise, that's another thing Aaron was preaching about is like, why, why throw PPC at something where you're not the top performing, you know, top, top converting listing for that keyword? Cause mm. you, you're just wasting money basically. But if you can dial in your conversion, pick foo, sell a metrics, IntelliV, using these tools for you know surveying and getting the best mm. main image and the best image stack. And I used to do a lot of listing teardowns for guys. I think people should join million dollar sellers.com. It's a Facebook group. It's not cheap, but it's not super expensive either. You know, being around guys like you who know what the hell they're doing. And you know, help people. I think is super important. Mm. So, yeah, I don't know. AI seems to be huge right now too. Yeah. So, seems like people should be leveraging that somehow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what, what what's your plan? Like you are now post exit. Well, so, what are you gonna do? Yeah, exactly. The goal. So, I went from zero to two million in sales on this new brand like in mm -hmm. less than a year. So my goal by the end of this year is to be up at 10 million run rate. So right now my supplements aren't selling. So mm. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to 
figure it out. It's only like Q1s in the bag. We're in Q2, early in Q2 right now. Yeah. So <laughs> I've got I've got this book out. Everybody should go to the Kindle store, grab a copy of this, Ultimate Health by Craig Brock. He'll change your life. It's only 99 cents in the Kindle store. Anyway, I, I want to push that really hard, get that up mm. to a million million copies moved as quickly as possible. By the possible. way, do, do, you have, do you have a book funnel? I'm setting that up today. That's what I'm working on with this other company. Is they yeah, specialize yeah. in book yeah, funnels. Yeah you, yeah, you should absolutely do that like and get it up and running and ASAP, right? Yeah, I've never actually had a successful funnel in my life, believe it or not. So- Oh, really? <laughs> I've, yeah, I've never actually done funnels. I mean, I, I tried a many chat sequence, I think for reviews mm. back in the day. and. Even that was expensive on Facebook ads, just even giving away a free product and stuff, trying to get reviews back when you could do that. Yeah. And um, so, so how much are, like, are you like putting, uh, investing into this new brand? Like how much are you planning to put uh, in? My the goal was to keep the investment under a million on mm. the new brand and see if I could, you know, scale it that way, but- um, And exit. Yeah, we'll see because the margins on supplements are good. It's just mm. the cost per acquisition is really high. So that's what I'm trying to crack is how can I do what my friend Jeremy is doing with his 20 minute trader Instagram TikTok channel? Mm. Or how can I get a, a book funnel that just crushes it? Or I don't know. I need to figure out how to get people into the brand affordably and then scale yeah. that. Yeah, supplements is quite a different thing, different category. And of course, it's like super competitive as well. So yeah, and I'm not even doing super competitive supplements in the space. Mm -hmm. I'm doing pretty uh, niche or niche uh, yeah. supplements. I'm not doing like vitamin C and like, vitamin D and just generic shit. My mm -hmm. amino acids are really specific, for instance, and they help with losing weight and help gaining muscle and there's a lot of real cool benefits to them. It's just um, educating people about that and then getting the yeah. attention is, is the challenge. If the, if yeah. the clicks are $15, then I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's your sign to get out. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not taking part of it. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you mentioned the, something before that, uh, I, I guess you have more of a intuitive approach in finding new products. It it's, is. It's, it's, it's so difficult. true. I'm more of a, like the, the Frisbees. When I, mm. when I pitched that idea to my family, they were like, you're crazy. Cause those, those Frisbees are actually free promotional Frisbees. The very first yeah, yeah. Frisbee I had that I found was it had a UPS logo on it. And it was a free <laughs> giveaway. And I was like, I can fucking sell these things. <laughs> so I put them as a two pack because, you know, if you sell one of something, the FBA fee would just cut too far into the margin. So I was like, mm. how do I, I'll do a two pack of Frisbees and who, no one sells two Frisbees except us. Like we were the first guys to start selling two Frisbees, usually you just buy one. And I was like, just, yeah, I was like, hey, these are really cool Frisbees. They're easy for kids to catch. I can make these fun and popular and I'll just jump on it. The bike lights, when I first saw the bike lights, I was in Newport Beach, California, Christmas time. I saw mm. a set of these bike wheel lights roll by and I was like, that's the coolest thing. Everyone's gonna want those things. So I was like, mm. I'm gonna be the number one seller of those within a year on Amazon. Sure enough, I was. And that more than that, we got them into the top 10 of sports and outdoors at Christmas time, the following Christmas. So we just crushed it with that product. So I'm more of a guy like, I don't, it's not all about the numbers and mm. crunching things. And I'm not, I am more of an intuitive guy. I'm a creative guy. Like how do I create more demand for this product than there already exists? Or how do I make mine different? So it just stands out. Mm. Yeah. And that's the thing, I, like there's so, so, so many different ways how to find products. Like one of our like top pro products was that, I mean, we didn't decide, uh, I mean, the point was not to even have a like stand and all. I mean, the point was that we're going to have it as a gift item for our customers, for our existing mm -hmm. customers. It's a gift item. But suddenly, yeah. like when we pay, took it to Amazon, it just started to take off. So it actually became one of the top products. That's great. I know you've done really well 
on Amazon. I'm not sure outside of Amazon. I know you do well with your, you know, your coaching and your, your courses. And I think you're a straight shooter and, you know, you give people good information and you obviously know you walk the walk. So, you know, you're not just one of these gurus who says they know how to do shit when they've never done it, or they just saw someone else's course on it. You know, you're actually mm -hmm. doing that stuff. I wish, I love creating on businesses. That's one of the things I love to do. So I wish that there was a way for me, you know, to your listeners, I'm not offering to do this because I'm super busy right now. But what I'd love to do is just help people with their businesses and just go like, okay, let's spend an hour talking about your business or 30 minutes. And like, let's see if I have any ideas about your business that you're not seeing, you know? And how could I, like what what creative angle could we take with this product or what variation could you introduce here to really take it to the next level? I think that would be a fun game to play. I would just want to structure it like in a way that it wasn't a waste of time for me, you know? Yeah. But to me, that's so fun. I love, it's so easy talking to people about their business, I find, because mm -hmm. you can just look at it and you can take a fresh perspective and then you don't have to do all the grunt work to implement mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the worst thing uh, uh, is that if you actually give someone advice and uh, you know concrete steps what to do and then they don't do it like that's yeah. that's the worst kind of feeling ever like come on like right. i told you what to do but you still didn't do it yeah i'll tell you one quick story i had this guy we had this we had this underwater pool ball project i showed you uh, a few minutes ago and it had a patent issue with it we had a competitor in that space who was the number one bestseller in that space. His product was called the watermelon ball and it was the first one out and you fill it with water and you play it with the pool, it sinks and you can throw it underwater and stuff. It's a really cool product. Anyway, that guy had a pat, we had a patent infringement issue with his filling adapter, how you fill the, the ball with water. And he basically came to me and he wanted to shut me down on Amazon. And I was trying to exit my brand at that time. And I knew that, oh, that would suck if I one of my best products got shut down on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So actually what I did was I, I befriended this guy and I said, look, how about I just help you sell more of your watermelon balls on Amazon? And you know, then you win and I win and just let me sell through this patent issue. I'll get rid of, I'll swap out the adapter on the next, next inventory. And mm -hmm. he was like, then I just started giving him ideas and I just went into action. I was like, like right away, we more than doubled the sales. Like he was the number one bestseller of this product. And we more than, you know, more than doubled his sales. And then he was like, you know, Craig, I want to exit. I was like, okay, I've referred him to the same broker I was in, co in t contact with. He ended mm. up exiting the brand for a higher multiple with more EBITDA. And then the broker paid me a commission for introducing them. And I got to sell through my product and it was just such a win-win like that. I kind of fucking love that kind of shit where instead of butting heads with people, you just find a creative way to, instead of fighting over the pie, like who's got a bigger piece of pie, you just make the pie mm -hmm. bigger, you know, like let's, let's, let's make this pie bigger and then we can all have a nice big piece. That's, that's yeah, the way exactly. I like Win-win situation. That, that's uh -huh. crazy like it, it all started from like uh ip infringement. <laughs> yeah and he was gonna shut me down and then yeah, yeah. You know, we just blew up his sales and he was like he fucking loves me now <laughs> <laughs> yeah eternally grateful for you <laughs> yeah he did great all right cool so uh let's see if there's any last questions do you have any uh, last words of wisdom to tell greg well, just circle back to, you know, I think now is a good time to sell. Just so you know, like even though the multiples are not what they were in 2021, that was an outlier year. And I don't think you should expect that ever to come back again anytime soon. So I think you should forget about what happened in 2021. And you need to be realistic. I think the economy is about to fall off a cliff right now, to be honest. And um, I've been wrong about that before, so I could be wrong again. And maybe Mr. Trump gets reelected and some miracle happens and the economy gets turned around. Um, but it looks to me like the writing's on the wall for the economy. 
So I would be looking to exit now while the going is still good, like and the economy is still up because selling a brand in a recession is like the multiples are going to be down. Getting capital is going to be difficult for buyers. Interest rates could easily actually go up on risk capital. I mean, treasuries and stuff like that is probably going to drop, but trying to get banks to actually loan money in a recession, you know, mm -hmm. there's more risk involved in that. So I think now's the time to exit. I think having a good broker is important or a investment banker and someone, I used a, a company called Two Roads Advisors. I thought they were really good. There's another one called Fortunate. I think they're good. Um, website closers, they know their business. Uh, gosh, Scott Dietz, Northbound Group, they know what they're doing. Like there's, there's a lot of people that can help you get to market and get done quick. But I think you know, like selling in the next four to six months is kind of your last opportunity before the recession really sets in. And you're not going to be able to exit any kind of decent exit like in 2025 or beyond for the next few years, in my opinion. But, you know, that's speculation. Yeah, but as we already see, so like with many of these aggregators, I mean, they even belly up and even Frasio, like um, mm -hmm. Frasio is and like fight for bankruptcy and having some a bit of issues right now <laughs> right and and typically you get a bear market every seven years or so and we haven't had a severe bear market since 2009 really so we're like long overdue i think we're living on borrowed time right now and hmm. funny funny money basically like there's no you know reserve sorry the uh there's nothing backing the currency and they can just play all kind of money hmm. games right now but you know, just what about the, the, in terms of like stacking up? Yeah. What about in terms of like starting now? Like you start oh. your brand. Start it. Okay. Well, I don't know if this is going to conflict with what you teach, but I think it's very difficult right now to start on Amazon. Like back in 2015, 2014, when you and I were doing it, you could fall on your computer and make money. It was just so, so easy. And now it's, it's become a very sophisticated game. And can you succeed at it? Yes. Like you and I are probably still launching new products and doing well with them. Mm. But we've got years of experience backing it up. And I guess if someone has someone like you leading the way and showing them exactly how to do it and they can execute on that, they'll probably do okay. Especially if they find the right opportunity. So by no means can you not do it right now. It's just, I think the environment's definitely more difficult and i think that next year is going to be even tougher when the economy slows down and people have less money to buy discretionary things mm. so yeah so it all comes down to having the experience like if you're starting right now you need to have the experience or so some, someone access yeah. to someone having the experience right right and i don't want to you know if you're selling a course on how to get started on amazon <laughs> I don't want to discourage your people necessarily. I just want to let them to be really realistic that it's not the good old days like 2015 and where you could buy fake reviews and you know you didn't even need to pay for PPC and all this kind of shit to get going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No black hat different... tactics or no, no, no stuff like that. Right. But here's the other thing: if you can build up a social media presence and you can actually do something you love and get some attention about it or have an email newsletter that's well liked or whatever if you can build up an audience there's no reason you can't succeed at amazon but just coming in like or if you can leverage that with someone else like say you have a partner who has a list of people that are into fitness and you say okay well i'm starting up this amazon brand can i set you up as an affiliate or make it some sort of win-win for them to promote your products to their group then I think you could definitely do well because I think a lot of guys still are just depending on Amazon PPC to make things mm. go right on Amazon. And that's a losing game right now. If you're thinking just, I'm going to jump on Amazon and only do it with PPC, I think you're going to have a tough time. Mm. Yeah. And obviously like costs are going up. So, which means that, um, you know, then, you know, th then you just need to get better at the, at, at better at selling instead of just, you know, throwing stuff and hoping that, yeah, it's going to stick or maybe it will just automatically take off. So I think what's going to happen, honestly, 
is there's going to be companies that were more like I was last year with my my grade AM gift mugs, where I was just like, fuck, I'm spending so much on it, uh, storage fees right now. I just need to get rid of this inventory. Like, I think there's going to be the opportunity now and going forward to buy existing brands for just the value of the inventory. Mm -hmm. or even less than the value of the inventory because if you get a super motivated buyer that's getting yeah. stuck with a lot of storage fees and say you see a listing that's not totally optimized and you can make their listing better i think there's an opportunity there for sure guys like aaron and his partner david at nexus capital they love picking up brands and you know enhancing them yeah so it's all about like how you do it and what's your um, perspective on like obviously these are like economic challenging times coming ahead so need to play the game well right yeah i mean but maybe maybe things maybe we go through a bit of a shit show for 12 months and then somehow maybe trump does get reelected maybe he does have some sort of plan to resuscitate the economy who knows all I know mm. is everybody should pick up a copy of Ultimate Health <laughs> in the Kindle yes. store. It's only 99 cents. It'll change your life. I, I will definitely check out the book. Maybe even before you get the audiobook version. <laughs> okay, that'd be awesome, man. Cool. But hey, thanks so much, Greg, for joining. And maybe see you when we when I, we see next time we go to that Hulk Hogan's bar. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, I'm down with it. You're welcome anytime in Clearwater Beach. Cool. Yeah, it's a beautiful area. Yeah. Did, did, didn't you say that it's the best place in uh, in US or? It's voted or the it? top beach top beach in North America uh, by TripAdvisor. So people who yeah. you know, book their travel or use TripAdvisor, they vote Clearwater Beach the highest of all different beaches in the US. Cool. Awesome. All right. So well, thanks for the time, Tony. Is, great. I'm just up. thanking you uh, and saying that you, you're a huge inspiration and giving a lot of motivation. So you are giving a lot Let's of like, positive go. energy for people. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to be doom and gloom either because when the shit hits mm. the fan, that's where like the cream rises to the top and the boys are separated from the men or the men are mm. separated from the boys or however that. Basically, we're going to find out in the next couple of years who knows how to run a business and who doesn't because anybody can run a business. Actually, not anybody can run a business in a bull market. But when, mm. the, when the market's going up, up, um, you know, people are more successful. There's money sloshing around. But when things get tight, you know, people don't know what they're doing. It becomes blatantly obvious and they go out of business. So mm. it opens up opportunity for people that actually have their, they don't have their head up their ass and they know what they're doing. Like good operators are going to do better and they're going to grow more, I think, or they're going to take up more market share. The market might get smaller. I'm trying to center myself. The market itself might get smaller, but the, the good operators are going to take more of that pie. So instead of the pie getting bigger, the pie is going to get smaller, but the good operators are going to take more of that. And so when the pie starts expanding again, then the guys who know what they're doing are going to have way more resources and more profit. I, I was running my first business during the dot-com collapse, and I ended up making more money after the collapse than I did before the collapse because oh wow really <laughs> yeah it didn't affect yeah. me hmm. yeah so if you keep your head positive and look for the opportunities like when the shit's hitting the fan there's so much opportunity it's ridiculous mm. yeah yeah even at tough times the big 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 ones the small ones can get then bigger and bigger right yeah exactly and as long as you're you know keeping a positive mindset and being ethical and surrounding yourself with good people and working hard and you're, you're not a dumb person, you're going to do well, especially if you're always upgrading your skill sets too. Mm -hmm. And like, there's so much opportunity in AI right now. Like, I don't, I don't fully understand it. All I know is it's as big or bigger than the internet was when I first started doing the internet in the 1990s. So if you can figure out a way to get your hand in AI and leverage that, I think you're going to do great.